Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2020 Jeep Cherokee, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Kurt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness. Many of our Jeep customers use their Cherokee to tow and even use light up accessories. They do it quite often. And so one thing that's really nice about this wiring is that we're going to be able to mount it up on the outside. So it's going to be really easy to get to and convenient whenever we need it. So when it comes to keeping our wiring outside, we have a couple of different options. We chose to use a bracket, which you do have to pick up separately, but you can find it right here at eTrailer. Or what you can always do too is take your wiring and wrap it around your safety chain openings here. So it's really just up to you. I kind of prefer the bracket. It gives us a little bit more of a clean look. With that being said though, what is important since it is outside is the fact that we have a nice thick rubber dust cap. Whenever we're not using it, it's gonna really help protect them terminals. But I do recommend going a step further and from time to time, just take some dielectric grease and put it on them and that'll help prevent any type of corrosion that may occur. The wiring is going to provide us with all those necessary functions to not only remain safe, but legal as well. And probably my favorite thing about this setup is the fact that it's going to use a module box. So what that module box is going to do is protect our Jeep's factory wiring if it's short or anything like that were to occur on our trailer side. And with today's newer vehicles that have really advanced electronics, that's a huge benefit because we wouldn't want to do anything to jeopardize them and create any issues on our Jeep side. With this setup, we're not going to have to worry about that happening. But at the end of the day, wiring is going to help put your mind at ease and make you feel a little bit more safe as you're pulling your trailer down the road. Now, as far as the installation goes, it's not too bad. It does just plug right into your factory wiring. That's pretty much the easy part. The part that is a little time consuming is routing the wires because we don't have a ton of room underneath. But as long as you stay patient, you should have no problem getting it done. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our install, we're going to be here at the back of the Jeep. We're going to need to open up our hatch and get our taillights removed. So to get the taillight out, we're going to have two fasteners and we'll use a T30 Torx bit to pull those out. The top one out. And then what we're able to do is carefully grab our taillight and kind of wiggle it around a little bit and we're able to pull it completely out. And if you flip it over here on the bottom, we're gonna disconnect it by pulling down on this red tab and then pushing down on the center tab. So that'll separate it. We'll set our taillight off to the side and repeat this same process over on the passenger side of our Jeep. With our taillights out of the way, we can now grab our new harness. And what we're gonna do is feed the wires down through this opening here. So we're gonna take the green and red wires with the T connectors on those ends, feed them all the way down. I found it does help if you kind of do this one at a time, just makes things a little bit easier. We got those going down. We're also going to take our four-way flat connector, do the same thing. And from there, we can take our box, as well as the white and black wire, and push that down as well. So we want this to drop all the way down. What we don't want to do is let this T connector here with our red, yellow, and brown wires drop down. We're going to be working with these right here. So this T connector, we're going to plug that into our factory tail light wiring. So one end we'll plug right into that factory connector. The other end is just going to go right back into our tail light.
And with it hooked up, we can just reinstall our tail light the opposite way that we removed it. So now underneath the Jeep, here is where our box came down. And I'm just gonna kinda let this hang out for now. What I'm gonna do is take our four-way flat connector, route that over towards the center of our hitch where we're gonna mount it, as well as the red and green T connector. I'm gonna bring that over to the passenger side. That way we can pull it up into the taillight pocket. So I'll do that now and show you the path that I took to get there. So I routed that wiring and what I did was come right up through here, kind of behind this little panel, dropped our four-way flat connector down to our hitch. The red and green wire with the T-connector on the end, I just continued behind this panel, went up and over our hitch and away from our exhaust, which you definitely want to avoid, and right up through here. Now, the way we're gonna be able to pull our T-connector up into the taillight pocket, what I did is just use a fish wire. It's a piece of nylon tubing. You can use a coat hanger or something like that, but you drop it down from the top taillight pocket, and then you can just tape your connector to it. That way we can go back up there, pull on our wire, and this will bring the connector right where we need it. And I'll just separate it from our pull wire. And this is going to work the same as the driver side. Sometimes too, if you tape that connector down to the wiring, it makes it a little smaller and easier to kind of bring up and through that pocket. That's why that tapes on that one. But pretty straightforward. Just one end of the connector plugs into the factory taillight harness. Grab our tail light, the other connector plugs right into it. Then we can go ahead and just reinstall our tail light. So I went ahead and just kind of bundled up our extra wiring using a couple of zip ties. And then I just zip tied our module box here to this factory wiring. That way we keep it nice and secure. But with that being said, now we're gonna take our white wire with the pre-attached ring terminal, and this is going to be a ground. So we're gonna to have to attach it to the body of our vehicle. So if you move right here to the bottom of our frame rail, nice, clean, solid metal that will provide us with an excellent ground, and it's easy to get to. So to attach it, I'm gonna use the provided soft tapping screw and run it into the frame rail. Now what we can do is take the black power wire coming out of our module box and connect it to one end of the bundle of black power wire that's included in our kit. So what I'm gonna do here is strip back the insulation on the bundle of wire. And I'm gonna put on a heat shrink buck connector. So that slides over and gets crimped down. My kit doesn't come with these heat shrinks. They come with standard style buck connectors, which will work just fine. I just like these heat shrinks because they do provide us with a little bit more protection against any corrosion or anything like that. If you'd rather use these, you can find them here at each trailer. But we'll take the black power wire going to our module box, put that into the other end of the buck connector, and crimp it down to connect the two wires together. I'll come back in with a heat gun and seal up the ends. So I went ahead and routed our wiring. And when you do this, you wanna be sure to avoid any hot or moving parts. But what I done is just ran it on top of our subframe. I used some zip ties to secure it. Drops down right here. Kinda just goes, 
underneath this panel here. You can see where it comes right out. Bring it back and through there. And I pulled this panel down. There's a couple of bolts that just kind of tie in the edge here. So you can just pull them out. Bring it along our brake lines. And here is where it goes up into the engine compartment. Now the way I got it up there is pretty much the same way that we got our wiring into the passenger side tail light pocket. I used that pull wire, fed it down from the engine compartment to where it dropped down here, taped our power wire to it, and was able to go back up top, grab the wire, and pull everything right where we need it to be. So here in the engine compartment, this is where our power wire came up. and. What we're going to do is connect it to a fuse holder and then to the positive battery terminal. So I'm just going to kind of cut off some of this extra wire we don't really need. Strip back the insulation. Again, I'm going to use a heat shrink buck connector. And crimp it onto the power wire. So, we'll grab our fuse holder. We want to open it up, make sure that fuse is not installed. We'll do that at the very end once we have everything hooked up. We'll strip back both the ends. I like to kind of give them a twist to ensure a good connection. One end of our fuse holder and get connected into that buck connector there. The other end of our fuse holder, we're going to take the included ring terminal, crimp that down. Once we have this crimped, I'll come back with my heat gun and seal up our buck connector ends. What we can do now is take our ring terminal and connect it to the positive side of our battery. We're gonna have a 10 millimeter nut right there. So if you pull that off, just slide our ring terminal over it and snug the nut back down. So once we have this snug, we can open up our fuse holder and install the included fuse into it. Now that we have everything all hooked up, it's a good idea to test our wiring to make sure it's functioning properly. So we'll go ahead and try our left turn, our right turn, our brake lights, and our running lights. So to help clean up our install look, I've chosen to use a bracket and I just bolted it to the bottom of our fascia here. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Curt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness on our 2020 Jeep Cherokee.